No, I don't waste no time What's going on guys and welcome back to a new video. So I literally just put up a post on my Instagram stories. If you guys don't already follow me there, feel free to check it out. It's at Joshua Daniel George. Uh, like I said, I put up a, a story post and I asked you guys for questions, you know, topics that I can discuss on YouTube. And uh, the plan is basically just to get a few, you know, shorter, more actionable videos on my YouTube channel as well, alongside the informational videos, alongside the vlogs as well. So one of the questions that I just got on Instagram stories was how to target people that spend money, which I thought was quite an interesting question to go over uh, on you know this video, but also to sort of reframe that question and reframe the mindset behind the question, if that makes sense. If it doesn't, feel free to uh, stick around because I will explain what I mean in more depth and detail in this video. So first things first, before we actually dive into all the Facebook stuff, I just want to uh, quickly you know, give you guys some information on how the whole Facebook ad bidding system works because I think that is important to understand you know, how we can actually get um, good performing or better performing Facebook ads. So what we need to understand, it's, it's not necessarily the highest bidder who wins. So for those that don't know, Facebook ads are basically you know, an auction. So you enter an auction and you want to buy media space, which is also where the term media buyer comes from. So someone who is a media buyer buys media space online. So you've got the Facebook news feed, you know, you've got a bunch of uh, posts from friends and family, etc. And then every so often you've got a sponsored post in between. To be fair, nowadays um, it's more the other way around. You've got a bunch of ads and every so often you'll see a post from a friend or family member. But anyway, you've got Every so often you've got um, Facebook ads, you know, sponsored posts in between your actual newsfeed. They appear on the newsfeed. You've also got them on the right hand side. Um, you've got them, you know, after watching a video, you've got them in Messenger and so on and so forth. You know, those are different types of Facebook ad placements. But every so often, like I said, you'll see one of these ads pop up and that is media space. So you have won that particular auction for that particular person. Um, and there's obviously other people that are also competing for that particular space, but you, in that case, won that particular auction. So let's say, uh, let's call our customer avatar Jim. Uh, no idea why Jim hasn't got a neck, but here we go. This is Jim, and this is Jim's Facebook, uh, Facebook news feed, and uh, Jim is interested in cheese. No idea why, but Jim likes cheese, and you, happen to have a client that uh, produces cheese and sells cheese um, and you know offers cheese to the area which um, you know where Jim is located. So Jim is on his news feeds and you target people interested in cheese. So you want basically people that are interested in cheese to see your advertisements. But there could also be a competitor that is also selling cheese and producing cheese, etc. that basically wants that same media space. So there's two people that are targeting the interest cheese. And in this case, you know, there's only one gym. So it's now basically an auction, you know, who gets this particular space. You both want the news feed. You, know, you both don't want the, the right hand side. You actually want the news feed on mobile. You want to target Jim there because you know Jim, uh, he likes to scroll, but as soon as he sees cheese, he stops scrolling and he wants to see, you know, what's going on. Is there an offer uh, on cheese that Jim does not know about? So there's two people that are trying to target Jim at the same time with the same placement. Who wins it? Now, it's not necessarily the person who bids the most. So of course, most people run on lowest cost bidding anyway, which means that we don't really decide what the bid is. For those of you that are doing manual bidding, uh, just understand that just because you bid more does not necessarily mean that you will get the space. So if let's say the bid is at, I don't know, 10 cents, so it's, it's, uh, it's, only, it's only 10 cents to uh, target Jim on the news feed and uh, you bid 20 cents, 
there we go but your advertisement is really bad the quality is low there's, there's text all over it etc um, i know facebook have removed the text overlay uh, or the text rule but it's still you still get penalized if you have a lot of text on your ads whether they say it's not um you know you, you still do so anyway if you bid 20 cents that does not necessarily mean you've outbidded your competitor and you will get this space because it's not necessarily about who bids the most it's about who provides the most value total, that person will win the auction. So how, what, what is that, you know, what is the, the, the algorithm or what is the formula to win this auction? Well, it's as follows. Is there a way for me to move everything over to the left-hand side? There we go. So how to win the auction. So the auction or the formula behind the auction is as follows. Um, you've got the audience that you were targeting, Please uh, just bear with me, guys. I'm not really good at writing like this with my mouse, but there you go. So we've got the audience. So if you're targeting people interested in cheese and you've got a cheese offer, then you know, obviously they're going to be interested, which means that you'll sort of win that part of the auction. If you, are, if you have a cheese offer and you start to target some people that are interested in salami and not necessarily interested in cheese, then you, know, you might not win that part of the auction. So you've got the audience. You've got the offer, of course, as well. Like if you have a cheese offer that is just really bad, you know, I don't know, maybe you're offering cheddar cheese to people that aren't interested in cheddar cheese, but you are targeting people interested in cheese in general, um, then again, you'll still lose that auction. So it's audience, the offer, and of course, the creative. And the creative is basically, in layman's terms, it is um, the image and the text that you use. So those two so the copy, image and copy, those two together are called the creative, also known as the ad. So this is what I like to call the Facebook DNA string. Um, no idea who actually coined that term, so please don't, uh, uh, it's definitely not me, I've read it somewhere, um, but like I said, I don't know who it is. So Facebook DNA string. So these three variables will basically be the deciding factor whether or not you win or lose the auction. So these variables obviously make up the Facebook ad. And then the result of this is you either win or lose the auction. Okay, so it's not necessarily who bids the most or who has the highest bid or who puts the most money into Facebook because you can actually win quite a lot of bids just by being creative and just by you know really creating um, scroll stoppers, what I like to call, you know, people uh, or advertisements that interrupt the pattern of that mindlessly scroll and what they're doing on the newsfeed. Like if you get really creative, you can actually win a lot of bids with a relatively small budget. But, but now that we understand this, we now, you know, we can also understand that it's not just about throwing the most money at whatever audience we are trying to target. And if we, you know, lash more money into Facebook, we will therefore win more bids and be able to target whoever we want. So. Now that we understand this, we can move on to the next part, which is, okay, how to actually target people with money. Um, now, before I go into this, again, a quick disclaimer. One of the audiences and the interest that I'm about to show you, a lot of people will be bidding on you know, these audiences. So you'll either need to get very creative or you just need to take this entire video with a pinch of salt, knowing that, okay, if everyone's just gonna be targeting those particular interests, it might not necessarily be worth you targeting that interest as well, unless you are very good at media buying. So unless you're really good at finding the right offer, you know, and basically getting the right creative together to compete with all of these other people. Okay, so with that said, um, I'll just hop into the ads manager. So of course, when you create the campaign, um, in my opinion, you should always go for conversions. And therefore, you know, once you do that, you can optimize for particular events that you want to optimize for. Now, for those of you that are new to the business manager, sometimes you will see website, app, messenger, WhatsApp, and then it will skip over the pixel. It'll go right to dynamic creative. And then for some reason, you won't be able to optimize for conversions. Now, this is a bit of a bug because of the whole iOS 14 stuff. What you need to do there is just make sure 
that your business, uh, your yeah, your business manager is verified, of course, but also your domain is verified as well. Once your domain is verified, you'll be able to select the events that you want to optimize for. You can prioritize particular events. So if you have a e-com store client, then prioritize purchase. If you've got a lead generation client, prioritize um, leads or complete registration. You know whatever you like to use. Once you've done that, of course, make sure that your ad account has access to the pixel as well. I've made that mistake in the past where you've literally done everything and you just can't figure out why you can't see the pixel or why the data is not there. And then you realize it's literally just as simple as the ad account not having access to the pixel. So make sure you, you've, you've done all that and then you'll notice that you'll be able to select a pixel here. But moving on to the audiences. So of course we can create a new audience or use a save audience. Um, if you have a lot of ad sets with you know complete stacks of interests and audiences etc that you want to use it would be beneficial for you to just save the audience uh, which you can do here and then when you set up a new ad set um, you can basically select the audience here as well without having to manually set all of that up for example one of our clients um, only delivers to certain postcodes but there are a lot of postcodes that that client delivers to all over the US so it's literally like a thousand postcodes that I need to manually enter here um, in the location target and basically I'm not going to do that every single time I set up a campaign. So what I actually do is I just save the audience and then select uh, use saved audience and just click there to uh, basically you know, get that audience back up again. So anyway, in terms of how to actually reach people that have money. One way of doing it is actually targeting an older demographic. And I understand, yes, there are a lot of young millionaires out there, a lot of, um, you know, especially like in the tech space, it's quite difficult to differentiate or to basically use age as a deciding factor whether a person has money or not. But the overall consensus is that if you target people below the age of, let's say, 23, you will get a lot of people that are just starting out. Um, again, I'm focusing now on like b2b etc and you know either high ticket offers or high ticket services you know if you're just um if you just got like a regular dropship e-commerce type store then this is not as relevant or not as applicable but if you really want to target the cream of the crop um one thing that i would do is actually move up that age range um to 23 maybe even 25 onwards um, cause like I said, as I just want to quickly interrupt this video and basically mention to you guys that I have a free social media marketing course and you can literally download this course if you are subscribed to my YouTube channel. So basically what I've done is I have created a custom audience with Google ads. Uh, for those of you that are subscribed to my channel and you guys will see a pre-roll advertisement on one of my videos where I basically give you the direct link to download this course. So it's an unpublished link on Teachable, which you will only see if you are subscribed to my channel. So if you want a free social media marketing course, all you need to do is subscribe to my channel and then you will see my advertisements. So without further ado, let's hop back into the video. Stereotypical as it is, it does work on Facebook. And again, this is just my experience, my opinion on it. It would be beneficial if you actually start to target an older people on Facebook um, because you know usually those people do have more disposable income. Second thing you can do is actually edit uh, or alter the locations that you are targeting to more affluent countries. So if you target worldwide, the purchase power of uh, lesser affluent countries is obviously much smaller. So for example, I was in Turkey the other week where the average monthly wage uh, in the, that particular area that was, was 400 euros a month compared to what uh, in the Netherlands, I think it's 2,500 or 3,000 a month, something along those lines which is obviously, you know, it's, it's, it's a big jump. So if you are um, offering a $1,000 a month service or a $1,000 a month program in that particular area in Turkey, and that person only has a 400 a month wage, then that is obviously a very big chunk and a very big investment for that person. If you offer something like that in the Netherlands or in the UK or the US, you know, it's much less of an investment because those people earn more on average, okay? So make sure that you are um, you know, basically conscious of the locations that you pick. And then, then of course, like I said, alongside uh, the age range that you choose as well. Then in terms of the target, and like I said, the, the interest that I'm about to name and show you guys 
are interests that a lot of people go for. So just take, you know, keep that in mind. If, uh, uh, you know, it's not the be all end all, it's not the golden interest to target. It's just to show you guys that you can get creative with this and show you guys you know, what the possibilities are with Facebook. So the first one that I wanna show you guys is engaged shoppers. And this one is great for um, you know, e-com stores, etc. And basically it's people that have clicked on the call to action button shop now in the past week. So I'll just quickly scroll up because I know that I'm in the way with my camera. So engaged shoppers is a behavior on Facebook um, of people that have used the buy now button or the shop now button in the last week. So when you've got your Facebook ads and you are uh, running ads, you know, conversion campaigns optimized for purchase and your call to action button shop now, which is you know basically getting people the call to action is to get them to directly take action. If people click on that, then for those seven days, you know, for the seven days that follow, they will be part of that engaged shopper audience. So it is a quite a large audience. Um, let's see how big it is. In the Netherlands, it's two and a half million. There's around eleven million active users um, of Facebook in the Netherlands. So you know that is quite a big chunk of people. Um, that are you know deemed as engaged shoppers. So that is one of them. Um, the second one that you can use, actually, let me just get that back up again and see what the suggestions are before moving forward. Engaged shoppers. Then we go to suggestions. Uh, the second one I was really gonna use is there as well. Facebook payments users. So people who have used Facebook payments in the past 90 days, and that could be either um, Facebook shop, Instagram shop, you know, they've purchased something through Facebook with the Facebook marketplace, um, or they've, you know, paid for their Facebook ads, you know, and that is also deemed as a Facebook payment. So you've got Facebook payments users 90 days, but you've also got 30 days as well. Obviously, 30 days is a slightly smaller audience, 90 days will be a slightly larger audience because it's over a longer time frame. But again, people that are paying online, people that are paying via Facebook, so they are used to using Facebook as a, a shop almost, right? So again, this is an audience of people that have money and spend money online. And then lastly, um, another audience that you can target is page admins. Why? Because a lot of small business owners have pages that they are admins of on Facebook. So if we just type in page admins here, We've got Facebook page admin, and then if we click on suggestions, we've got business page admin, and then depending on what niche you're in, you can do health and beauty page admins, uh, food and restaurant page admins, travel and tourism page admins, and so on and so forth. Okay, so those are like the sort of interests that you can use um, to your advantage, you know, use that to your benefit when you are trying to uh, target the more affluent people on Facebook. And again, like I said, take this with a pinch of salt, a lot of people are using these interests. You know, it's not a secret. It's not uh, the be all end all. Just use it, you know, to your benefit. It's it's uh, it's not the silver bullet, but you can actually benefit from targeting these audiences. The way I will probably set this up, if you do want to use interest based targeting, then set up a campaign with multiple ad sets, and then have every individual interest that you can see here as individual ad sets. Run that on CBO, and then see, um, you know, which particular ad sets or audiences actually generate you the most results or your clients the most results, um, you know, meaning the most amount of purchases or leads depending on what type of client it is. So hope you got something out of this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Leave this video with a thumbs up if you did. Comment down below what you'd like to see from this channel next. Subscribe to the channel for more and I'll see you all in the next video.